Now we're going to look at another creative aspect of Photoshop, and that is painting in Photoshop. But before we get started, what I want to discuss with you is color. Color is extremely important in all aspects of design. Even the lack of color is a deliberate choice. And so because color can invoke emotion, capture the viewer's attention, send a message, it's important to choose the right color. Not only the right color or the right color family or color palette, color scheme, all different words for the same things, but you want to choose colors that complement each other and that go together well. Some colors go together, some do not. And so let's take a look at how you select colors and color palettes that do work together. And that is done through the use of a color wheel. Now, here we see a basic color wheel. Red, yellow, blue. And these are considered primary colors. And what that means is if we combine red and blue, if we combine red and blue, then we'll get purple. If we combine red and yellow, we get orange. And if we combine yellow and blue, we get green. Those are each secondary colors. And so what we see here is a secondary color wheel. And then what you have is your tertiary colors, which are the colors that fall in between those primary and secondary colors. And a tertiary color wheel has 12 different colors on it. All right, so anytime you look at a magazine cover or a book cover or a poster or a postcard or any other design concept, you'll see that it's made from a specific set of colors. It has a color scheme. Usually this is three to five colors. Usually a designer starts by picking a specific color and then that's expanded by selecting other colors based on how they work and look together with the main color. And overall, the designer is looking for an emotional response or how something feels or the viewer feels when they view that color scheme. There's a lot of science behind colors and what they mean to people and how they make people feel. And we're not going to go too in depth into that, but some basic examples are blues, lavenders and greens have a soothing effect and so because of that soothing effect hospitals, rest homes, rehab facilities, etc. are usually designed using that color palette. Now what we see here is our color wheel and when you're picking colors it's best to pick colors using a color wheel as your guide. And so as discussed earlier, we can see in here, we have our primary colors. Equally mixed together, they create the secondary colors, which equally mixed together create our tertiary colors. Now some of the terms used to describe colors include hue, saturation, and brightness. Now hue is a term for pure color. That is before it's had any white or black mixed with it. So whenever you think of a color, red, blue, green, pink, orange, that's the hue. Saturation, however, describes a color's strength or intensity. How vivid or intense is the color? As you reduce the saturation, the hue or color is going to begin to look more dull or gray. It's going to be a lot less vibrant. So saturation and vibrance, when discussing color theory, work hand in hand. Now brightness can also be referred to as lightness, and this is usually measured in percentages, and it determines how light or dark the color appears when you look at it. You can consider brightness as the amount of light shining on an object. So white 
is a brightness of 100% and black would be a brightness of 0%. Now when picking a color scheme, what you want to do is make sure that it's appropriate for your project. Unless you're in the business of dealing with children, you're probably not going to use a primary color scheme. However, if you're teaching elementary education, primary color schemes, red, yellow, blue, are prevalent in especially preschool education. Now, once you know what your main color is going to be, there's some basic rules you can follow to pick your other colors to go along with it. And we're going to go over now how to use the color wheel to pick four different types of color harmonies or color schemes. So let's look down here. Let's say you had selected green to be your main color. Now an analogous color scheme means that you're going to pick colors from each side of that green color to be supporting colors or to be part of your color scheme. So analogous means that your color scheme is going to use colors from the wedges on both sides of the main color. So green's the main color. So over here we're going to select this and this. Now on a complementary color scheme, you're going to use colors from the wedges directly across from the main color. So if we had this lime green color here as our main color, then we're going to go straight across and we have this magenta and that would be complementary. For blue, yellow is a complementary color and for green, red. Now a monochromatic color scheme means that you're going to pick colors all from the same wedge of colors in the color wheel. So let's look at this tertiary color wheel here and we have different hues of blue right here. A monochromatic color scheme would pick colors all from the same wedge. So you might have a dark blue, a mid-range blue, and a lighter blue all from the same color wedge. Now a split complementary color scheme will use colors from the wedges on each side of the main colors complement. Let's say the main color right here is green. Straight across would be red, but we're picking from each side of the complementary and that's why it's split complementary. So the complementary color for green would be red, but the split complementary color scheme would rather be magenta and deep orange. And as you can see, there are some others. There's triad color schemes where you place a triangle in the middle and whatever the three points of the triangle are pointing at. Quadrilateral is a square. Tetradic is a rectangle. And so it's using the four different points of the square and the rectangle to select the color scheme. Now we're extremely lucky that online we have a lot of different options to help us find color schemes if we're struggling. And Adobe has provided Adobe Color, which used to be Cooler, K-U-L-E-R, it's now Adobe Color Creative Cloud. And you can find that by going to color.adobe.com and you'll want to go here and you're going to log in using your Adobe login. The same thing you use for your Creative Cloud subscription. So Adobe Color Creative Cloud used to be Adobe Cooler and what's wonderful about this is once you're logged in, any themes that you save are accessible by the Adobe applications through the color library. But first let's take a look at some of the different color schemes and how they're displayed here on Adobe Color. Now what we see here is an analogous color scheme using red. And so once again, it is going to select colors on each side of the color selected. And as I move my main color around, or I can click and drag it in to get more muted shades, less saturated, further out on the edges is more saturation. So if you want a less saturated color, you just drag it to the middle. 
and I can just drag it around to find several different options of analogous color schemes. Now a monochromatic color scheme, once again, all of these colors are aligned on each other right here within the same wedge. And so as you drag that around, you can see all the different options again that you have. And you can adjust each one of the pins for the different colors individually. Now a triad color scheme is once again, imagine a triangle. And each point of the triangle is going to fall on the different areas within the color wheel. And wherever those points are is what you're seeing here. Complementary is what's opposite the colors on the color wheel. And here we have five different color swatches. And so the five different colors are selected from within the two wedges opposite from each other. The compound complementary, remember, is opposite and then to each side. And then you could always do your custom. So if I'm doing a compound complementary, I could pull my blue over here and then opposites to each side and the left and the right of the complementary will give me that split complementary color scheme. And that is the Create tab under Adobe Color. Now down here, you can click on the individual color swatches and you can see the color recipes for your RGB and your hex color identifiers. Now, if you click on the small triangle for the drop down, you can also get your lab and hue saturation brightness numbers as well. So you can type in your CMYK, hex, RGB, whatever. And you can click on the different color types and then close the drop down and it will replace the color recipe of choice that is shown based on your selection. Now if you want to adjust individual sliders, all you have to do is come down and you can adjust your sliders. I could also, if I wanted to start with a specific color, all I have to do is enter my color values in any of these categories and it will bring up that color on the color wheel. And so the middle color square in the color palette is my main color. And so let's say my main color is 822965. That's the color that the client provided me with. Now I can go through and I can look at the different color schemes that the Adobe Color will automatically create for me, and that gives me a good starting point. Now, if you go under Explore, you can see that there are all different types of color schemes already there. And you can come down and you can look at things that you may have published, most popular color schemes, you can have it do random, etc. You can go through and you can rate different color schemes and then the ones that you've rated you can go pull back up. You can do a search. Let's say I want to do a search for butterfly. It'll go out and it'll look for different color schemes that match that and you'll see I have monarch, butterfly, all different types of butterfly color schemes that pop up. Now my themes are different themes that you add into your color library. And once you've added them or saved them, you can access them from any device and utilize them in your designs. You can also share them with teammates, etc. So for 12A, what you're going to need to do is select a main color of your choice and you're going to need to take a screenshot of each of the following. 
first you'll need to log in and you're going to screenshot each of these top four color schemes analogous monochromatic triad and complementary and then you're going to have to create a custom color scheme of split complementary for your main color once you have all those screenshots you're going to compile them on a single Photoshop document and submit that as 12A and you will name it 12A last name underscore color dot PSD and each one of your screenshots should be in a separate layer that is labeled by the type of color scheme it is. Now another great feature of Adobe Color is that you can load an image and create a color scheme around that image. So I'm going to load an image from our work files. I'm going to load deep blue. And when the image is loaded, it will automatically go in and look for different colors. And you can drag and adjust the colors however you want. So if you don't like the way it is, you can customize it. You can also go by color moods. And so based on this image, the colorful, bright, muted, deep, and dark color moods can be easily found and easily adjusted. Maybe you wanted to make sure you had a specific color included or you wanted to make sure you don't have a specific color. So that makes it a little bit easier. And once you've moved things around, then it becomes a custom color scheme. Now, if this is something you wanted to save, all you would have to do is go to the far left, click Save. The name of the image will automatically be populated within the theme name. You can change that if you wish. And you can save it in your library. So you can just save it in a general library or you can create a new library. Let's say you have a specific project. I'm going to name this 1302 example and now I will have a color library named 1302 example and it will place this deep blue color scheme in that library. If I wanted to tag it I could also go in and add tags that will make it easier for me to find and you can choose to publish the theme or not publish it. I'll just go ahead and publish it. It doesn't matter. It's not anything confidential. If it was a confidential project, something you're working on for a client, then you may not want to publish that. Now I'm going to click Save. And so it's saving it. And once it's saved it, I can view my published theme there. And then I can go down here. I can republish. I can make a copy of this. and edit a copy and resave it and it gives some basic information over here as well who it was created by as long as a link to them um, what date it was created if there's any tags now I can go up here and click on the little pen or pencil tool and that allows me to edit the name so if I want to edit it after the fact I can and now if I go to my themes you'll see that I have two different libraries. I have my general library and then I have my 1302 example library that I created. Now for 12B what you're going to need to do is go to unsplash.com save and rename an image to your desktop or hard drive. Upload that image to Adobe Color and create a color library named ARTC1302. Save your image color scheme within that color library and take a screenshot. Now let's go to Photoshop and see how we can use these color schemes that we've saved. I go to Photoshop. I'm going to do File, New, 
and we're going to do just an eight and a half by 11 CMYK at 300 resolution document. And you can go ahead and rename this 12B and your last name, underscore color two, and click OK. Now that doesn't save that, it just gives it a name. And when we go to save it, we won't need to rename it at that point in time. Now, to view my different color libraries, if I want to add them to this project, all I have to do is click on my Libraries tab. And you'll see here that my contemplation color theme is showing up. However, my deep blue color scheme is not. And so to load your deep blue color scheme, what you're going to need to do is go into the drop down under my library and select that specific library category and that color scheme will then show up. Now, what you're going to need to do is drag or copy and paste the screenshot that you did of your cooler categories onto its own layer and turn that layer off so it can't be seen. Okay, so let me go ahead and drag my screenshot. I'm going to place that and turn off the layer. Now, on my background layer, what I need you to do is select your brush tool and then using your bristle brushes, which if you go up here to your main brush library and you may need to go in under your settings and select reset brushes and OK to make sure that you have what I'm seeing here. Make sure your opacity is set at 100. Your mode is on normal. I want you to put 100 pixels and you can see here that I'm using my tablet. Using your color theme, you can go in and you can click on the individual colors in your color library and you have five different colors showing from your color theme from Adobe Color. The first six brushes are just round brushes. And the next 10 brushes after the round brushes are your bristle brushes in Photoshop. I want you to select each of the 10 bristle brushes and do a brush stroke. And you're going to go through your color scheme twice as you do the 10 bristle brushes. And so each time you change your brush, you change your color going through your color scheme. When you've done it five times, then you just start over on the color palette. Now your brush strokes may be longer or shorter. That's fine, it doesn't matter. But you will need to have the 10 different bristle brushes. Again, those are the 10 following the first six round brushes in your brush menu. If you needed to reset it, you can go up here into the settings panel and select reset brushes. Click OK if need be to make sure you're using the correct six and you need to use the colors in your color library, ARTC 1302, mine is 1302 example, but yours is ARTC 1302, and you're going to go through and use each of the five colors twice as you do the 10 bristle brushes. You should have already named it 12B, your last name, underscore 122, but just in case you have not, when you save this in your chapter 12 folder, that's what it needs to be named. You also need to make sure that you have a layer with a screenshot of where you created your
color library. That screenshot needs to also show your username. You'll see my username is right up here. I can zoom in down here. Move over. And you can see on the screenshot my username is showing up. You need to make sure your screenshot has your username. Once again, save it in your chapter 12 folder and that's 12b. Now there are a lot of different resources that you can use online to help you when you're selecting colors. One of the more popular ones is Color Scheme Designer 3 where you can go in and you can select different colors and it will show you light page examples dark page examples, etc. using that color scheme and web designers use this website quite a bit to help them select different color schemes and be able to see exactly what it would look like applied to their designs. And again that can be found at colorschemedesigner.com but there are a lot of different options out there, tons of websites to help with color, etc. It's a matter of playing, but knowing the basics, knowing how to use your color wheel, knowing how to use color in your designs is very important. And from this point on will be expected of you in all designs and work that you do for this class and any future design classes as well.